very much. Uh, thanks for the invitation. So we'll be mostly using, uh, at least today, exclusively using the report. Um, so uh, what uh, what I'm talking about is uh, is uh, joint uh, work with Luna Sawa. Uh, who's in the audience and the principal is like myself and Max Planck Institute, uh, Scott Smith, who now is in Madison, and uh, Henry Bieber, who now is in Bath. And uh, what, uh, what, we, uh, what we were interested in is uh, um, solving. Uh, quasi-linear parabolic equations with random, random right-hand sides. So, uh, so uh, uh, I, we always call, uh, so we are in one space dimension and we call the time variable two and the spatial variable one. Uh, that's, uh, of course, a little bit unusual, uh, but, um, one reason for doing that is that uh, uh, today, certainly what I will present uh, doesn't change if you pass from uh, from such a parabolic operator to an elliptic operator. So uh, uh, there's not much uh, in the theory which changes if you uh, if you do this, and then this would be a perfect notation. Uh, so uh, so in other words, we don't treat the time variable in a very different way than the spatial variable. Uh, that's one reason for using this uh, this strange notation. So with uh, uh, with a random uh, and therefore in particular rough uh, right hand side. So that's uh, that's what we uh, what we're really after, and uh, we want to do that, or we're doing this by using regularity structures. And uh, mostly our contributions, uh, at least so far, have been on the deterministic side. So uh, those who know about, uh, is this in the way, by the way? No? Uh, so those who, uh, who know about uh, regularity structures know that this is uh, inspired by the rough path theory. And uh, one feature, or perhaps the main feature of rough path theory, is that it separates uh, uh, a stochastic treatment, a, if you want an offline stochastic treatment, from, uh, from a completely deterministic treatment. And, uh, and so our, our main uh, contributions have been uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the deterministic side of this. So TDE side, and uh, that will not be different for this talk either. And but uh, so for this course, uh, kind of the purpose of the course is is to uh, use this as an excuse to uh, uh, give uh, uh, an introduction into regularity structures. So, uh, so, uh, so perhaps uh, uh, that's the uh, that's the main merit uh, that uh, uh, we will uh, learn. Uh, for those who haven't who don't know that better than I do, uh, and there's certainly some people. Uh, um, you will learn something about regularity structures. So let me just remind you uh, at first, for those, and this will only be useful for those who have already seen regularity structures. For those who haven't, don't worry, uh, since I will treat this uh, in this uh, in this uh, short course uh, uh, more or less bottom up, uh, uh, motivated by this type of example. Uh, so. Uh, um, so, but for those who have already seen, let me just remind you uh, 
uh, um, what, uh, what, uh, what uh, in, in the notation and language of Haira, what are regularity structures? Uh, there is a set of homogeneities A, uh, there is an abstract model space T, and there is a structured group G. So this is the set of uh, what we may call homogeneities. And that's uh, uh, supposed to be uh, discrete, so no, uh, uh, no accumulation point and bounded by below. Uh, T is uh, the uh, abstract model space. And uh, the relation between the regularity, uh, the homogeneities, and T is that uh, it provides a grading. Meaning that uh, there is a natural way of writing T as the direct sum of uh, subspaces, uh, let me call it kappa, uh, which are indexed by the homogeneities. And uh, this here is, uh, uh, this here is a, a, a group of uh, linear. Uh, uh, and the morphisms of T, all the morphisms, of T, uh, which are triangular, uh, in the sense that uh, if you look uh, uh, at an element of this group, uh, and you look at its uh, uh, deviation from the identity map, and you apply it to uh, one of these uh, elements, uh, so one of these subspaces, <coughs> then this, uh, the answer of the output is contained in uh, uh, all the subspaces of lower, in the span of all the subspaces of lower homogeneity. So that's, uh, that's the regularity structures, and uh, we'll also you introduce uh, the positive model. And uh, so the positive model, again, we will see that, but just for uh, those who have seen, uh, uh, this is uh, kind of uh, something which should remember, consists of uh, 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 something which is uh, called pi, which is the model and which is indexed by uh, points. And uh, uh, gamma uh, uh, yx, uh, which is indexed by pairs of points. And uh, <clears throat> so this, uh, for each x, this uh, pi, t, pi x can be considered as a map uh, from R2 into the abstract model space. So here, uh, since we're looking at the positive part of the function, those are really kind of functions, t-valued functions, not distributions. And this here, for fixed pairs of points, is an element of the structure group. And there are uh, the algebraic properties that uh, uh, this here uh, uh, provides a change of base point. So this point x is also somewhat often called the base point. So uh, pi of y is equal to gamma uh, yx pi of x. And uh, these base points uh, are, change of base points are transitive or compatible in the sense that uh, gamma zx is equal to the composition of gamma zy, gamma yx. And then there are analytic properties. Um, and the analytic properties are that uh, uh, if you uh, look at the model uh, and you project onto uh, one of the homogeneities, 
and you evaluate this at some point y, uh, then this should be small if uh, uh, y approaches x, if y, the active variable, approaches the base point x, and uh, the smallness is governed by the homogeneity, kappa, so this is why it's called homogeneity. It's of this order, and here I should put it in p, because uh, for a leading order operator that's parabolic, you should use the parabolic distance. So x p is square root of x2 plus x1. And so that's the, uh, that's the continuity condition on the model, and there is also a continuity condition on gamma. And in view of this triangular <coughs> property, it's best expressed in uh, by uh, looking at uh, gamma minus the identity, so gamma yx. And you apply it uh, to uh, an element in the uh, uh, k uh, of k homogeneity. And then uh, you want this uh, also to be small and to be at least of the order, again, y minus x p. Uh, ah, and then you look at the uh, k prime component of it. And then this should be uh, kappa minus kappa prime. This is always positive because uh, by the triangular property, this expression would vanish if kappa prime would be uh, equal to kappa. So, uh, so that's what uh, that's what regularity structures. Uh, this, this is how they are defined. And again, if you uh, if this uh, is new to you or uh, anyway you're suspicious uh, because it's too abstract. Uh, 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 I, I, I mean, again, perhaps the main merit of what I'm doing here is that uh, you will see that in an example. And uh, in order to, uh, well, not just to make uh, life simpler, but also to make life simpler at least for this course, I will make one uh, uh, big simplification. And the simplification, so there is a quality, uh, so uh, qualitatively, but that's, uh, as many of you know, not important. Uh, I will always assume that Xi is uh, smooth and periodic. So as many derivatives as I want. And periodic, uh, and periodic always refers to uh, uh, space-time periodic. Uh, so with respect to uh, uh, torus if not said otherwise, and then probably one should, uh, I should uh, consider this here as the distance on torus. And, um, but then, uh, now that's more important, uh, quantitatively, quantitative, um, I, uh, uh, we allow ourselves control of uh, the Hölder Sima norm uh, <coughs> Psi alpha for uh, some alpha strictly larger than one. And that uh, means uh, we're restricting ourselves to the regular case So there's no renormalization going on here. So uh, what, I'm talk what I'll be talking about will not involve, uh, will not, because of this assumption that we want to take this control here, uh, will not involve uh, renormalization. So it doesn't focus, I mean, there will be no renormalization group, just the structure group and things like this. So uh, that, of course, takes away uh, uh, kind of the main interest of it. But uh, still, uh, uh, I mean, one has to understand the regular case, and I think it's a good, as I said, it's didactically good to work this out to see really how this structure emerges. And uh, but let me say that even in this regular case, uh, um, this is interesting. 
because I want to do it without cutting off any, without cut off of the homogeneity. So to any order. So I want to do that because in a certain sense then you see the structure coming up in the clearest way. If you don't cut off, if you don't write down a finite number of objects, but you really consider it uh, uh, to any order of homogeneity. And in fact, uh, what, uh, what at least I think is that uh, uh, even in the regular case, there is an interesting connection, you will see that hopefully, uh, to the uh, kind of concepts of the philosophy of dynamical systems. In the sense that uh, you will be realizing that what we're doing here is really kind of uh, uh, providing a smooth parametrization of the solution manifold, even if the right-hand side of the nonlinear equation is only mildly regular. So what I find interesting even about this case is that it shows you that even for uh, right hand side for limit, limited regularity, which, which is so regular that you don't have to renormalize, but still it's a limited regularity in the sense that you allow yourself only control of a norm uh, that's uh, uh, moderate. Um, you get uh, uh, kind of a very complete uh, uh, description uh, of the solution manifold of this nonlinear equation with rough or fairly regular or not so regular right hand side, uh, as if you were in kind of an analytic uh, situation. So, uh, so in some sense, it shows that kind of this the setup of regularity structure also uh, shows that uh, kind of these equations have perhaps you know I mean a restricted uh, restricted complexity. Okay, so this is very vague, and uh, uh, so let's uh, let's get started. So that was the uh, uh, first section. Let's. Uh, I'll ask for questions in a second, but perhaps not at this moment because I haven't really said anything. Besides, uh, so now let's see how. So let me, uh, as a warm up, start with. Uh, uh, with, in a certain sense, a restricted situation, which, uh, however, already contains the most delicate part of the uh, structure. And then we'll move on to, uh, uh, to the full-blown uh, regularity structure in this regular case. In a certain sense, uh, one way of paraphrasing uh, uh, yet uh, kind of another um, aspect of, um, of uh, rough path or regularity structures uh, is to say, don't <laughs> don't consider a single nonlinearity, but consider all nonlinearities at the same time.
So, uh, so that, I mean, that's easy to say, and uh, but uh, I think quite uh, uh, quite important and you know a general aspect of mathematics: generalize your problem. Don't uh, don't uh, uh, don't don't look at a single nonlinearity, but look at all the nonlinearities. You know, an idea which is behind Young measures or quantum mechanics or any you know any way. I mean, general idea. And so what does that mean here? Um, uh, so, uh, so let's parameterize uh, this nonlinearity as if it were analytic. That's something we don't need, but uh, uh, but uh, let's write A of U in the following way as a power series so let's start with 1 because we want uh, A to be bounded away from 0 so that the equation is nice and parabolic. Uh, and then let's, let's write it as uh, the power series. So ZK obviously is the uh, case derivative of A minus 1 at the origin, and I need the combinatorial factor of one of the factorial. And, uh, and now let's, uh, and I should have done that uh, even before, let's uh, fix one, uh, let's fix uh, kind of a solution. Uh, so uh, uh, how did I want to do that? Uh, uh, consider, well, I here. Consider uh, u and the constant lambda given by the requirement that uh, uh, u is periodic, uh, that the spatial average of u vanishes, lambda is a constant, uh, such that we have e2 minus a of u in 1 squared u plus lambda is equal to psi. So, uh, so by this, I just mean the spatial of the average, the average over uh, one period periodic cell. So uh, uh, that, uh, as, at least as long as we're in the smooth case and psi is sufficiently small, I mean this. There is a well posed theory for this type of equation. So uh, it's reasonable to. Uh, uh, um, uh, to think of that you can really take a nonlinearity, in particular if it's analytic like this, and you have a unique way of associating to it uh, 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 such a solution. Okay, and uh, so now we, but we, now we want to analyze how this solution depends on the nonlinearity, and uh, uh, the most natural way is to understand how kind of the derivatives, the sensitivities with respect to the nonlinearity. So take we take derivatives <laughs> with respect to uh, these variables which parameterize the nonlinearity. That's a very natural way of uh, approaching. And uh, of course, since uh, now we're not taking derivatives with respect to a single variable, but a countable set of variables. It's, uh, uh, it's best to introduce multi indices of bookkeeping. So beta is something which associates uh, uh, to every uh, non negative integer k, uh, uh, an integer, a non negative in integer beta, and in such a way. Uh, that uh, it's only has only finitely many uh, non-zero entries. Uh, in particular, uh, the length of the multi-index is finite. And uh, consider uh, the corresponding partial derivative. So, uh, uh, so that means we're taking the derivative with respect to the z z zero variable b dot 0 once uh, with respect to the z1 variable, b dot 1 once, and so on. And altogether, this is a derivative of order 
of the length of the amount index. And so uh, if we do this, so we apply this to the equation. And OK, I forgot an evaluate at the origin. So uh, uh, rewriting uh, the equation as uh, d2 minus d1 squared u is uh, plus lambda uh, is equal to uh, a minus 1 of u d1 u uh, plus psi. <coughs> so I haven't done much, but uh, just what you would also do in perturbative analysis, you write uh, this variable coefficient operator as a perturbation of a constant coefficient operator. And now I plug in uh, uh, this, uh, this expansion, so I can write this as the sum over all k larger than 0, uh, zk uh, u to the power k, uh, d1u uh, plus xi. So uh, that's the form uh, we want to write the equation in. We take derivatives and uh, get by Landis rule a term which is not that messy and uh, which uh, can be rewritten anyway in a rather nice form as we will see. So uh, so what do we get? Uh, D2 minus D1 squared del beta of u uh, is equal to I have the sum over k, and then I have a, a big sum over uh, 1 plus k plus 1, k plus 2 multi-indices. So beta 0 plus beta 1 plus 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 beta k plus 1 is equal to beta. Uh, d beta 0 z k, d beta 1 u, d beta k u. The second spatial derivative of d beta k plus 1 u. That's just Leibniz rule. Nothing, nothing more than Leibniz rule, just kind of a compound version of using, using Leibniz rule. And now this term, uh, uh, of course, uh, simplifies quite a bit. Uh, this term is equal to uh, 1 only if uh, this uh, multi index is just. Uh, the one which at the kth position is equal to 1 and 0 else. So if uh, beta 0 is equal to ek, which is the uh, multi index with 1 at kth position and uh, 0 else. And in all the other cases, because we're evaluating at the origin, this is equal to zero. So uh, one of these multi indices is gone. Ah, and I, have, I forgot the xi. So uh, xi doesn't depend on a. Uh, so this term only contributes if the multi index is equal to zero. And so uh, let me just uh, rewrite this. Uh, well, uh, here, sum over all non-negative integers k, ek plus beta 1 plus beta k plus 1 is equal to beta d b1 u d b k u d1 square d b k plus 1 u. And of course, uh, Uh, the fact that uh, uh, u was pres uh, periodic is preserved, and the fact that uh, u has uh, vanishing spatial average 
is also preserved. And uh, now, uh, this uh, equation, and again, I forgot the, uh, the plus one term. So uh, I will say, tell you in a second that this can be written in a more compact way. But before doing so, let me point out that uh, this complicated looking stuff is trivially solvable. So you can construct this here. So, uh, so by, by kind of standard PDE theory, There exists unique uh, let me find it like this. Uh, uh, pi p, a uh, pi beta, uh, such that, uh, and I tell you why this is the case. Uh, ah, I forgot the uh, I forgot the derivative on the constant here, so. Uh, because, of course, the constant also depends on A, uh, which stays on the left-hand side. So there exists a unique uh, 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 um, collection of periodic functions uh, indexed by multi-indices and uh, constants. Uh, how do you want to call them? C beta, uh, such that uh, the parabolic operator plus this constant is equal to uh, this expression. Ek plus beta 1 plus beta k plus 1 is equal to beta uh, pi uh, beta 1 pi beta k d uh, one squared pi beta k plus one and uh, periodic and spatial average zero. <coughs> so let me just say why uh, why this is solved. Ah, and I again always forgot the always forgetting this here. Why is this solvable? Uh, you can do this by induction over the uh, order of the multiples. Because uh, clearly, uh, uh, when you sum over all the multi-indices beta 1 to beta k plus 1 so that this identity holds, you have that uh, uh, when it comes to the length of these multi-indices that because of the plus one here uh, all of them individually have to be strictly smaller than beta so uh, what appears on the right hand side of the equation for pi beta just depends on pi's which have a lower multi-index so those have been computed in the previous step so you can consider this right hand side as a given function, and it's a given smooth function. Remember that we make the qualitative assumptions that the psi is smooth. And, uh, and then this is solvable provided the right hand side has kind of spatial average equal to zero. That's what the constant C beta is for, which therefore is also uniquely determined. And then you just use Fourier method, I mean Fourier theory representation to solve, uh, to solve, this, uh, solve this equation. So there's no problem in constructing this complicated looking object, whereas uh, constructing the original solution, uh, the nonlinear solution, uh, is, uh, is more subtle. So it's yes. yes. Yeah, please, questions. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, if like, like you start from beta small, but then is there like for beta equal to zero? So for beta equal to zero, the so for beta equal to zero, this ah yeah. So for beta equal to zero, the sum collapses because zero cannot be written as the sum of ek plus something. So for beta equal to zero, uh, the equation turns into uh, kind of the 
linear uh, V down zero is equal to the side In, into this into this uh, into this equation. So that's that's correct. That's the anchoring for the uh, inductive construction that you solve this equation, and then from then on, uh, uh, this term isn't there anymore, and you just uh, kind of have a more and more complicated looking nonlinearity into which you plug things. Okay, so so in a certain sense, that's the structure which uh, which you automatically are led to if you take uh, if you want lines uh, uh, by the ladder of considering uh, uh, the solution as a functional of the nonlinearity and analyzing this uh, analyzing this uh, uh, this functional. Uh, other, so, okay, so let me make one uh, further remark. So, uh, so this motivates now. Uh, ah, yeah, right. Perhaps I should also point out that this sum here is always finite. Why is it finite? Uh, well, beta is a is a is a multi-index. That means uh, kind of uh, 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 all but fine. Uh, I mean, all uh, almost all uh, entries are equal to zero. Uh, so there are only a few EKs which fit into beta, so this sum is finite. So when this sum is finite, this sum is finite because there are only finitely ways of decomposing a multi-index into seven multi-indices. So, uh, so these, the sums which are there are, uh, are naturally finite. Okay, and uh, so... So there's a kind of a nicer way of writing this, or a kind of a compound way of writing this. And uh, that has to do with the fact that that's the first attempt for uh, the abstract model space. Uh, so consider uh, the abstract model space to be uh, uh, the space of formal uh, power series in these variables that k. <laughs> uh, this is a perfectly fine linear, infinite dimension linear space, uh, uh, but it's also an algebra because formal power series can be multiplied. Uh, and the uh, uh, so if, uh, uh, if you have a formal power series and uh, uh, you look at the product of two formal power series and you want to get the coefficient uh, with the index beta, uh, you get it by uh, summing uh, all pairs which give you multi-indices which give you beta. And uh, so that's the, uh, that's the uh, multiplication of power series. But, uh, if the power series were, were a polynomial, that really corresponds to polynomial multiplication, to usual multiplication. So uh, take this uh, as t, and uh, and then yeah. Um, so you say consider u as though it were a solution because you want to find it, and then you, the idea is to write it as this power series to. So 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 I'm let's say I'm by 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 standard uh, perturbative nonlinear PE. I know that uh, for every uh, reasonable nonlinearity, I can find a unique solution. U. So I have I have uh, it, this map. Uh, although it doesn't matter here, but it's just uh, a good way of thinking. Uh, there is a there is a map from uh, the nonlinearity to the solution, provided I impose you know I make the solution unique by imposing periodicity and mean zero. There is a map from the nonlinearity to the solution, and now I can look. Uh, I want to understand this map, and I want to understand it in the most classical way as possible. I want to understand its derivatives, so functional derivatives. But now I don't. Uh, I do that in a more algebraic way, in the sense that I represent the nonlinearity as a power series, 
and I take derivatives with respect to the coefficients in the power series. Yeah? So, uh, so that's what I'm doing here. And uh, that leads to, uh, to this sequence of uh, kind of nested linear, uh, linear problems. And uh, lambda is also always uniquely determined by the... By the uh... Yes, because, uh, um, uh, because if, you, uh, if you take the spatial average of this guy here, the ter this term drops out. And, uh, okay, I mean, it's easier to see it on the, on the level of the linear equation. For the nonlinear equation, you need a little bit of, you know, mildly nonlinear theory. It's not, uh, it's not instantly seen that uh, both u and lambda are unique because it's a nonlinear problem. But here, uh, on, the level of, uh, on the level of this problem, when I'm solving a linear equation, it's clear, right? I have to, uh, I have to make this right-hand side. For this to be solvable within the class of periodic functions, I have to make the right-hand side of uh, uh, spatial average equal to zero. Because if you write down the equation in, on the Fourier side, the symbol uh, which you have to invert vanishes on the k, k equal to zero Fourier mode, and, uh, and therefore you need to have the right hand side to have a uh, spatial average equal to zero. Okay, more questions? So heuristically, can we think of the solution as the sum of all these pi's? So heuristically, uh, uh, heuristically, uh, uh, you get. Let, let me write down one step more, and then I tell you how you get back to the solution. Okay? So let me first introduce this uh, uh, this shorthand notation, which has to do by uh, which uh, which comes from introducing these uh, uh, formal power series. This and that's, I mean, uh, sometimes more convenient as a power a form of power series in uh, these infinitely many variables with coefficients which are periodic functions. And uh, C is. Uh, also a form of power series with coefficients that are scalars, so numbers. And then, uh, then the equation reads, then uh, pi is uh, unique, pi c is uniquely defined. Leading other operator, so here the heat operator, you apply to pi, uh, you get uh, uh, this expression plus c plus psi times 1, where 1 is the uh, uh, the one element in this uh, uh, in this space of power form power series, and uh, uh, the spatial average of pi is equal to zero. So that's uh, that has exactly uh, the same uh, meaning as what's up there. But of course, it's much 
much more pleasing to write, but if you write it like this, you don't see that it's trivially solvable. In order to see that it's trivially solvable, you have to write it in terms of components, and then you see that <coughs> because of some kind of null potent structure, uh, this is solvable, but that's the neat way of writing it. And now, how do you get a solution? Uh, so, this is, so this is completely rigorous, but then uh, heuristics is Uh, get uh, solution by so get the solution get the solution u back by evaluating uh, the power series in the argument uh, zk is equal to one of the k factorial dk a minus one D, D, K, and zero. So this is the way it was constructed that uh, uh, if you now if you now take this uh, formal power series, which is perfectly well defined, you make the assumption, which in general will not be true, that this is an analytic function that it converges so that you can actually evaluate it, it's not just a formal power series, but it's a real power series, then all you have to do is, you have to evaluate it uh, by plugging these numbers into the arguments, which, by the way, then requires that A is infinitely many differentiable, often differentiable, and then formally you get, uh, you get a solution of the original problem. <coughs> And you get the constant, so by evaluating the power series pi, uh, this gives you the function u, and by c, uh, this gives you the constant lambda. So this here is rigorous. And this here is uh, the way back is not really there. Right? So. Uh, uh, but this uh, this step is perfectly fine. Okay. So were you saying that the uniquely that, that this, this this uniquely defined follows from that follows from what I just said. And I don't see how because somehow it's like, uh, because I mean it's uh, I mean it's this inductive inductive step. So uh, mm -hmm. so I mean. So we agreed that pi zero was uniquely defined. Let's say now you want to define pi uh, e one. Yeah, okay, but I mean, like, is this pi somehow defined in terms of this pi betas or? Is it ah, right. So, uh, uh, so the way I mean, the way you should think about it is, uh, I mean, the pi betas are the coefficients of the formal power series. So perhaps this is the uh, this is the uh, 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 the uh, line which is missing. Let me write it in a different way. Uh, Z beta uh, pi beta and uh, Z beta is defined, this monomial is defined in the usual way. Uh, so you take the product over all uh, indices k, uh, zk to the power of beta k. Right. So, uh, uh, so uh, whether I think uh, I think of a formal power series or I think of the coefficients of the formal power series, that's just different ways of thinking about the same thing. And uh, so, if you want the pi betas are the components of the pi, or the coefficients of the pi. And, and this, this is kind of uh, the vector way of writing it, and that's the component-wise way of writing it. But it has the same content. It's just, uh, it's just a convenient notation because then uh, kind of uh, 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 this, uh, this product here uh, uh, kind of helps you to rewrite uh, uh, the inner sum of the betas in this more compact way. So actually, pi is really a function of R two. 
pi here is a function of r. I mean, it's periodic. I mean, so uh, I'm always uh, identifying per periodic functions also with I'll functions of r. I'll take a periodic function. I find zk and apply pi. So, so uh, again, your question. What's the relation with uh, this with that? Uh, this is a function. This is a periodic function. The coefficients are periodic functions. Okay. Right. So, uh, so now, in a certain sense, formally, this pi has many arguments. It has the zk arguments, but then it also has uh, kind of uh, a periodic argument. And unfortunately, in a second, we'll, we'll see that we need even one more argument. Yeah. So this is why this is why it's helpful to think of pi, not just uh, like you know perhaps I would do like a, uh, like a, a function which has value in the value in the abstract model space, but also to think of it think of it like this, which of course is completely equivalent of a formal power series with coefficients which are periodic functions, and that's what I wrote. <coughs> You finish that example of pi u1, which might help? Yes, you can do that. So, uh, what, uh, what does it... Uh, uh, what does it mean for pi 1? So, I have to solve the heat operator applied to pi e1 plus some constant, which I have to allow. Uh, so now I have to think about what is standing here. So beta is equal to E1. Uh, so I have to write E1 as Ek plus something. This is only possible if Xk is equal to 1. So the only contribution of this sum is from k is equal to 1. So that means I have uh, plus B1 plus B2 is equal to E1, pi B1, D1 squared, pi B2. This is gone because E1 is not the trivial multi-index. And uh, uh, okay, so this is again, uh, uh, I mean, this sum is non-empty, but it just has one element. Beta 1 and beta 2 is equal to 0. So this is pi 0, d1, pi 0, and so on. But uh, uh, after kind of writing down these expressions uh, like we did for years, uh, uh, you're at some point lucky, uh, happy when, when you find a, when you find a convenient structure which is not, I mean, which really kind of is in the, uh, in the nature of the, uh, of the problem. Yeah? Okay, so uh, so this uh, this would be, I mean, I, in a certain sense, this model is not rich enough. We will see that, but I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to point this out now. Uh, instead of, uh, uh, instead of doing so, I want to work a little bit with this uh, with this uh, uh, restricted model because there is one uh, nice, almost topological structure which gives rise to the structure group in this model. So, uh, and that uh, that's a shift structure. So, uh, and that's best seen on the level of the original equation. So, obviously, uh, if uh, u is solution for nonlinearity A, then uh, u plus the constant, which I want to call tau zero for reasons which will become clear later on, is a solution of the shifted nonlinearity. A tilde, which uh, associates uh, the value V 
a of uh, v plus tau zero. This is almost too trivial to write it down. I mean, uh, uh, this, uh, this shift of the solution, because I'm having a kind of uh, 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 a differential equation, is not seen by these derivatives. But, uh, uh, but in order to accommodate the shift of the solution in the nonlinearity, I have to kind of shift the nonlinearity. Okay. So, um, so what does that mean on the left of our description of A? Uh, kind of our power law description of A, this means that uh, uh, the set K tilde's, the description of this function here, uh, is given, and that's just a, kind of a nice, uh, absolutely simple calculation, uh, L uh, uh, K plus L over uh, K all zero to the power L, Z, K plus L. <clears throat> Just accept it as a binomial, essentially the binomial formula. If you, uh, if, you, uh, if you shift kind of a power series, and now you re-expand the new power series, and you want to express the new coefficient in terms of the old coefficients, that's what you get. And... Uh, so what does that mean on the level of our structure group? So this is if you want kind of a, a change of variables. And uh, sorry, what does that mean on the level of when I haven't written down the structure group on, on the level of the abstract moment space? So it's a trivial, I mean, and in such sense, what comes now in the end is, is really a, more or less a topological um, observation, but in a certain sense, it encodes the structure of the, uh, the nonlinear problem. It's kind of a. There's a, a tilde missing in this AB, I think. Uh, the Z tilde is not in the formula. So, uh, so the ZK tildes are. The uh, coefficients of a tilde and, and the uh, <coughs> analog to the description of a b yeah. Yes. So you can put tilde. On yes. So uh, so remember that uh, that uh, I'm uh, okay. So this is a little bit uh, viewed uh, as just suggested light <laughs> notation. Uh, I want to describe it this way, and then I call it. Felix, don't you want the solution to be u minus two? So that's it. Cancels in the nonlinear. Mm. 
of the structure group. Uh, uh, so, uh, so this is a change of variables, um, and uh, and a change of variables leads to kind of uh, a change, uh, uh, kind of transforms one power series, formal power series into another formal power series, and uh, so that gives the transformation. Gamma of uh, on the, of uh, yeah on the power series. Tau of uh, K, and that transformation is of course linear, and it's also uh, an algebra. So it is an algebra. Endomorphism, and therefore I have to characterize it just on on the uh, kind of linear monomials. So it's enough to say uh, what it is on ZK, and there I'm just copying this formula. So, uh, uh, and the notation we use is the following. So, uh, uh, to such uh, uh, an element uh, tau and t, so tau, it's tau zero itself can be a form of power series, we associate uh, uh, homomorphism, algebra homomorphism of. Uh, of T, which we call gamma. And uh, in a certain sense, that can be interpreted as an exponential map, as, as I will point out in a second. Uh, but uh, before doing this, um, let me point out that, uh, uh, so what does this mean on the level of pi? And uh, on the level of pi, this means that uh, if you take pi and you transform it according to gamma, and now I'm adding it to it to tau zero, and uh, I call this pi tilde, and I take the constant and transform it to gamma, uh, then I get a new solution. Uh, so then I get uh, d2 minus d1. Uh, pi tilde uh, plus c tilde is equal to k larger than zero z k pi tilde k d one pi tilde plus xi one. So um, so in a certain sense, because uh, we're looking at the entire kind of, we're, we're looking at the entire solution space. I mean, in a certain sense, we're looking at all the nonlinearities. Uh, we get this non-trivial structure on the abstract solution, abstract model space, which allows us to transform our model and still get the uh, solution. Uh, but of course, now the spatial average is no longer zero, but it's given by so uh, uh, so uh, uh, that's the first observation that we have this uh, uh, non-trivial uh, transformation of our abstract model space, which when applied to the model gives us a new solution but now with a modified uh, <coughs> uh, spatial average. Okay, so this... So you can check this, uh, in a certain sense, it's not surprising by where it comes from, besides the sign, which I'm now confused about, but you can also check it by hand, uh, that uh, this is the case because 
the differential operator commutes with this here because this gamma doesn't act on the uh, periodic variable, it just acts on the, uh, uh, on the formal, on the dummy variables. And, uh, uh, and uh, on the product, uh, using the algebra and the morphism property, it factorizes, and then when it falls on this one here, you're using exactly the definition. So it's a good exercise to, uh, to do that. Okay. Um, so let's let's move towards the structure group, and let's <clears throat> point out that uh, um, this uh, gamma can be seen as an exponential map. So remember that uh, in general, uh, the infinitesimal uh, generator of a shift is a derivative. And uh, so we should do the same thing. We should uh, look at uh, t times tau 0 and look at the gamma t which, according to this rule, is associated to the scale element. And then see whether we have differential equation. And indeed, we have. And the differential equation, uh, at least when it acts on zk, can be uh, easily identified. where uh, this is a new uh, object here with uh, the derivation of zero, which is given by the following uh, formal, uh, I mean the formal, form I mean the writing of, uh, 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 I mean the very suggestive writing of how it acts on formal power series by writing it like this. So it, uh, it takes a power series, it does something on the coefficients uh, in front of the zk variable and in the front of the zk plus 1 variable, and it takes this, uh, uh, takes this sum. And, uh, and then, uh, so, but again, this is a simple comp uh, computation which I don't want to do on the blackboard. You get this uh, differential equation, and therefore uh, uh, this suggests. that uh, indeed gamma can be given as uh, an exponential type sum. Uh, which is like this. And uh, now you may say that this is not really an exponential sum. Uh, I mean, this is... Uh, because these things in general do not commute. Uh, this is not equal to the matrix exponential of uh, this derivation. That's not surprising because here you get a kind of, uh, this is not equal to a tau 0, d 0 But it's something which uh, essentially has, uh, has a very similar structure. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, this is, again, an easy uh, computation, which I don't want to do on the blackboard, which uh, uh, now reveals how this transformation gamma acts uh, on any element, not just on this uh, uh, algebra basis elements, by writing it at the, as the series. And from the series, you can see that it has a triangular structure in the following sense.
<laughs> the following sense, so uh, if I look at the um, coefficients of um, If I look at the um, uh, at the uh, uh, coefficient representation of uh, gamma, uh, uh, then we have that uh, gamma minus the identity in the components uh, L beta gamma is equal to zero unless uh, the scale norm of gamma, uh, or if if the scale norm of gamma is larger than the scale norm of beta, where the scale norm is not just uh, not really the length of the multi index, but the select the weighted length of the multi. So, uh, so this is a condition. This is type a type of condition which comes up in uh, in higher as uh, I mean, which will eventually uh, yield to uh, to the condition in higher uh, to this triangular type condition in higher, which uh, I mentioned in the beginning. And in particular, sorry, what does it say after the T implies that gamma has? So, uh, so, um, so this uh, this representation of gamma in terms of the generating element tau zero and in terms of this derivation d zero implies that gamma has that this transformation, this endomorphism, algebra endomorphism has triangular structure, by which I mean uh, the following: look at the matrix representation of gamma which is this object, then uh, look, uh, 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 like you would do when you want to check nil potent or so, look at gamma minus 1, gamma minus the identity. And then uh, uh, the statement is that the entry beta gamma, this matrix entry vanishes if it's on the diagonal or if uh, it's kind of below the diagonal in the sense uh, uh, that uh, uh, this length of gamma is larger than the length of beta, where length is measured in now this uh, this length here. That's what it uh, that's that's what it's supposed to stay. And in particular, this implies that gamma is invertible. So we have a group provided we have a group structure, and. Uh, Do have to stop? Uh, one minute. One minute. <laughs> so, the group structure is also, uh, uh, let me finish this here, is also topological uh, because because how does um, how does uh, recall um, Recall how uh, tau, how gamma came about. So uh, gamma transforms a form of power series into a new form of power series, and we really uh, thought of form of power se series as something which acts uh, uh, on these nonlinearities. And uh, what it, the definition really was: take the nonlinearity and shift it. Perhaps I need a minus sign here. Uh, <coughs> we shall check. So this is a, this is in a certain sense the heuristic, heuristic definition of how this gamma acts on formal power series. Uh, uh, if you th identify formal power series as functionals of A, then it's uh, what you get when you shift A by something which may depend on A itself, and uh, that in fact will be important that it's allowed to depend on A itself. And now, what happens if you uh, 
look at do at two uh, at the composition of two transformations and you apply it to uh, a so this is uh gamma prime tau applied to b where b is the uh, just uh, a brief a short notation for the shift at A. And uh, then you apply again the definition. This is tau applied to the shift at B, this time shifted by tau zero prime of B. And now if you insert this, uh, in both places, you realize that this is the same thing as tau applied to uh, A shifted by tau zero of A plus gamma tau zero prime uh, applied to A. And that is uh, the, uh, uh, the group structure, so let me write it uh, 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 offline, so uh, if tau zero gives rise to gamma and tau zero prime gives rise to gamma prime, then tau zero plus gamma tau zero prime gives rise to gamma times gamma prime. So that means uh, if, uh, uh, if uh, that means that indeed you have a group. So this uh, kind of uh, shows that you have um, that it respects the uh, uh, multiplication. This shows that it's invertible. So therefore, uh, this uh, is uh, this defines the structure. Okay. So let me. Uh, Stop here after one of the sentences. So uh, this, uh, this, uh, the second section, I looked at, uh, as we shall see, uh, kind of not the complete situation, but in a certain sense, we already discovered an interesting structure and kind of uh, part of the final structure group from looking at the simple case and, uh, uh, and understanding how, how shift uh, I mean, almost this tautological observation, how shift of the nonlinearity gives rise to kind of this uh, uh, kind of an interesting structure. And then after the break, uh, uh, um, I can either give you more details on these statements, or I can move on to uh, uh, now really defining the, uh, 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 the full uh, structure group and the full model uh, and uh, um, so on. So, sorry for being over time. Are there more questions? Uh, sorry, what do you mean by a uh, power series acting on nonlinear? Oh, okay. So, remember that uh, how did we get to the model space? Uh, we said. Uh, we consider our solution, let's say our solution in a point, as a functional of the coefficient of the nonlinearity. That was the very beginning, and uh, um, and we did that in a kind of in a more algebraic way by describing the nonlinearity in the power series and really kind of looking how it depends on these and looking at the derivatives. But in fact, I mean, heuristically speaking. What we're really looking at is uh, kind of nonlinear functionals of nonlinearities, and uh, and then uh, this uh, this element of the structure group big gamma really uh, can at least heuristically. I mean, the proper definition was given before, but the way you should think about it is really this one. You. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it's a transformation of nonlinear functionals of the nonlinearity. 
and it's uh, it's a transformation which come which comes from shifting the uh, nonlinearity by a shift which may depend on the nonlinearity. Okay, so and then and, and then if you see it like this, then it's obvious that it's it's a group, and therefore the group structure is kind of most transparent if you take if you adopt this point of view. You can also check it from uh, directly from this definition. But that's less intuitive, I find, than to, uh, than to make this observation. And, uh, and in the end, it's, uh, so again, I would say all this structure grows out of the fact that we're looking at a nonlinear equation which has a certain structure, right? I mean, there's no zero on the term, so uh, if I change, I mean, uh, kind of constants are only seen in this nonlinearity, but the nonlinearity is local. And, uh, uh, and therefore, you, you, in a certain sense, get this uh, on this blown-up description. You get this. Uh, you get this uh, structure, uh, which comes from uh, from the shift of the nonlinearity. And then, okay, so we need to do a bit more. But uh, what comes next, in a certain sense, is simpler than uh, than this part. Other questions? Uh, if no, let's thank the uh,